well, welcome everyone. Um, uh, and if you're listening along live, great to have you with us. I see we've got people joining. In fact, if you are listening along live, um, if you uh, are up for just giving it a share on Twitter, that'll help uh, encourage others to come come join and listen along too, um, uh, which would be nice. Uh, and in fact, Magna, Gabe, I don't know whether you've tweeted already, but um, uh, worth doing so, uh, just so that it shows up for, for ever, all of your, I'm sure, many, many thousands of followers. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you are listening along as well, along live as well, I'm hopeful, hopeful at some point um, we'll be able to bring some people in for questions. So I guess, like as you're listening, just uh, be thinking about questions you could ask or topics you'd be interested in, and like uh, if we've got time, we'll we'll come to that and and try and use some of these features that Spaces has got to to bring people up. Um, in fact, I did I did play around bringing in some speakers, so maybe I'll just remove those people now so that I don't confuse myself. Sorry, folks, who I'm just removing. There we go. Um, I think we're also recording this, so if you're listening after the fact, um, I guess if we put this out as a podcast or something, um, and you've got questions, then um, you can just drop us a message on Twitter or something. I'm, I, I know uh, all three of us, I'm sure, would, would lo love to uh, continue conversation, even if it's in the future. I guess also, um, before we start, I guess the goal here really is just to have a conversation. So um, I guess rather than just like me interviewing the two of you or something. Um, so uh, I think just just for us to have that in mind, I suppose, like uh, definitely ask questions of each other, uh, Gabe, Magna, and of me. And like, uh, yeah, let's let's. Uh, I think the the, the more uh, the more we, this can be a conversation, the more interesting it will be. Um, maybe let's just do some quick intros, and then we can kind of dive in to the actual topic at hand. Um, so uh, I'll go first. I'm the CEO of Human Made. We're an enterprise-focused WordPress agency. I founded it with Noel and Joe uh, about 12 years ago. Um, I guess we're focused on helping our clients use WordPress as like the, their primary kind of digital platform. Um, we've also built Altis, which is is kind of a fully hosted enterprise WordPress platform, um, and also a slight layer of native DX functionality, things like personalization analytics. Um, perhaps I, I guess with the goal of speaking to some of the some of the gaps that we were seeing in the uh, kind of between enterprise WordPress needs or enterprise users needs and, and like what what WordPress is an ecosystem is offering um, what was I, gonna say? I guess personally I kind of care a lot about WordPress and open source as a technology movement I've been here since almost the beginning of my professional life um, and uh, I continue to see like a lot of opportunity for WordPress in enterprise it feels like we are both, and uh, this is kind of what's what stood out so much from from your article, Magna. We're we're both like doing really well from a market share point of view, but also uh, feels like there's a lot more that we could be doing to to um, present a a better product to, to market and like uh, better meet meet the kind of changing needs of, of our customers or whatever. And so I'm kind of quite personally motivated by that, motivated by that still. That's one of the main reasons I'm still doing this, like twelve years later. Um, uh, beyond, you know, beyond, beyond the uh, uh, the joy of running a company, which I'm, I'm sure you'll both agree uh, has no downsides whatsoever. Um, uh, Gabe, maybe I'll throw to you next uh, for, for, for a quick intro. Well, not, not that mine was that quick, so I don't feel like you've got to make it quick, actually. <laughs> uh, I'll see see if I can keep it short. Um, I'm Gabe. I'm Managing Director for 10UP across the EMEA region, so really focused on our business in Europe and Middle East. Uh, like Human Made, Ten Up is it, an enterprise WordPress agency, really focused on helping people create great content and then creating great experiences off the back of that. Um, very much at the enterprise level, I think you know, with a, a team of about three hundred people globally now, it's this kind of conversation that Magna started really resonates with us in that yes, we are all playing and, and operating at the enterprise level. But often it feels like there's more we could be doing, ways we could be positioning WordPress differently, ways we could be kind of supporting that enterprise client in a different way. And and so, yeah, excited to kind of have that that conversation here, but also continue that with with folks. Awesome, thanks, Magna. Do you wanna you wanna get it? Yeah, thanks for bringing the non-English speaker. So I'll keep it uh, especially short and sweet. So Decode, uh, based out of Norway, uh, been doing WordPress uh, and kind of enterprise work uh, the last 12 years. We're a team that's distributed now across Europe, mostly. Uh, I guess what separates us from 
many of you guys are uh, we're, we're mostly focused on Scandinavia and and our local market and been really busy uh, busy in terms of bringing WordPress into the market and and the I guess the biggest difference for us is we're almost alone up here. Uh, mm. There aren't really, uh, comparing to the UK and the US where there are so many good agencies competing for the same business, we're on the enterprise level more or less alone uh, in the WordPress space. And that brings uh, challenges uh, on its own because we we're, we still have to kind of stand on the barricade saying that WordPress is ready uh, for these, these types of clients. Uh, mm. yeah. and, and, I, and I guess that, that's also why I'm hoping to bring bring this perspective or, or this discussion on. Uh, uh, it would be really helpful kind of expanding the market in Scandinavia especially. Uh, especially. Uh, cool, thanks. Thanks for that. Um, well, I'm going to come straight back to you. You said you were going to keep, keep it short, but I'm going to come straight mm -hmm. back to you, Magna. I guess, you know, that the, what prompted bringing this discussion together was, was this article you wrote for Post Status, uh, which I think perhaps is something you've been thinking about for a while, um, called the Enterprise WordPress Paradox. Um, and I guess kind of the, the, you know, your kind of opening core point there is like, WordPress is doing really well in enterprise, but a lot of a lot of what got us here um, and has perhaps led to that success. Um, uh, you know, you, you, your your point is that that's perhaps not going to be the things that that take us to the next level. Um, so yeah, I think perhaps it makes sense for you to just give us a bit of a summary of of um, of your points there, and then and then we can use that as kind of a jumping off point to to dive into some uh, some deeper conversation around some of the core the core points you were making. Yeah, definitely. So this is uh, it's actually an article I wrote uh, a, a couple of years ago, but I've been sort of sit, sitting on it, uh, but it's still still. Uh, relevant um, and I think it has a lot to do with what I said in the beginning us working in the local market competing against non kind of WordPress consultancies uh, and having to stand up for, for WordPress all the time uh, also uh, in, in, in Norway especially uh, even though it's an enterprise brand it doesn't mean that they have enterprise needs uh, because we're a small country, you don't have the volumes that you guys have uh, in terms of scale, scaling things. So hmm. uh, when someone buys a website here, it's not the IT department, it's the marketing and communications team. And then they will say, well, why, how, how will WordPress help us? And we need to kind of bring in the discourse of the value that we can create on top of this platform. It's not about the technical. They don't really care about the technical platform because... Uh, if they bought Optimizely or uh, Sanity or whatever platform, it will do the job uh, for them. Uh, so it's not about the technical capabilities anymore. Um, mm. uh, and and I think um, there's a company in Finland. They do kind of it, it's a, a tech advisor company that uh, they don't are, they're not tied to any uh, system. They just give advice on what technology to, to choose based on on your need. And they do a uh, they do a um, review of enterprise kind of websites across Scandinavia, especially Finland. Uh, and uh, I remember talking to him a couple of years ago, where he was still pretty skeptical uh, to WordPress. Then I talked to him again a, a couple of months ago, where it's starting to change. And he had a really good point, saying, "Well, from a technical standpoint, now WordPress is enterprise ready. The biggest problem is that the agencies delivering." WordPress, they are not enterprise ready. That meaning hmm. uh, they can deliver the tech, but they don't have the processes in terms of kind of business development strategy, uh, digital marketing, SEO, and so on. And and our competitors that are not delivering on WordPress, they they can kind of full service you uh, in that way. Uh, and and I think one, uh, we need to kind of get on the ball in terms of delivering the the, the full. Uh, experience, but I, I think it's also a really interesting d discussion to have to say to see, well, how can uh, what does open source the, the 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 kind of the culture and mindset of open source mean in terms of how we're doing business, and can that also be a, a differentiator? Uh, and I, I I really think it can be. Uh, so I I have this one example that I'm I, I enjoy. Um, I got a. I got feedback from 
from a client a couple of years back we were doing we did the 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 website for the biggest political party here in Norway Hela during election year we're sort of outsiders to to kind of win that tender um and then uh I met one of the guys on on their team uh, a month later and he said well the reason why we chose you were one you didn't try to ch- uh, to sell us anything you didn't try to convince us on anything and then also uh you were really laid back and i think that <laughs> mm. that's that's something that we have brought from the open source culture the openness the sharing of knowledge uh, and so on bringing that into business uh, is also something that can set us apart so i think that's uh, a really interesting conversation to have and, and see how how can we do more of this teach I think like, learn from each other i think there's something really interesting that as you've been speaking i've been thinking about which is like I think so much of the end of like the enterprise CMS space, right. Was you go buy a platform and then you find the agency that can do the best design or the best marketing on top of it. Mm. And with WordPress, you kind of have to do both, right? Like we are both the people selling, <laughs> selling in air quotes, the, the platform and the services on top of it. And I wonder how much of that is actually some of the challenge, right? Like if you go to AEM, Mm-hmm. or Sitecore or whoever else, like you're not expecting Sitecore to be the ones who give you the best design. You just want the yeah, best right. tech from them. Yeah. I mean, it strikes me that, you know, what one of, you know, I guess, I guess Gabe as you know, turn up, I guess, is in a, a kind of plays in a broader market than it's, than it sounds like you do. Uh, Magna mostly focused in kind of local market in Scandi and, you know, is, is, very, is quite full service. Right. And um, so I wonder like, is that, is that a reflection of you kind of having seen similar things and thus like, uh, you know, growing beyond those core technical services in order to meet them? Like uh, uh, how, 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 how do you guys approach that? And, and is that because you've seen similar things, Gabe? I, I think it's exactly that. Like we, yeah. I don't think we would win half the work we did if mm-hmm. we didn't have an in-house design team, if we didn't have an SEO team, if we didn't have, a, a revenue team for our publisher clients. So much of our our ability to service clients at that level is about mm. being able to solve problems for them, not being able to deploy a CMS. Right? That's that's what they're hiring us for, and those problems are not just technical. And I guess yeah, it's like you know the the the, the I really love the way you just framed that point of like we're we're having to take kind of both both propositions to market simultaneously we're, we're trying to convince our customers and clients that wordpress is the platform they should choose and that's going up against uh, an am or a site or an acquia or something and then we're also convincing them that hey we're the agency that you should hire yeah. to to build your you know the kind of creative marketing um kind of outcomes on top that you know that you're after um like do, do you do you kind of approach both of those things you know almost separately or or is that just all kind of munched together in one in one proposition i guess like that's one of the one of the things that that i've been thinking about a bunch in which you know i, I saw threads off in your article magna is this this challenge that like as a space we're all taking wordpress as a platform to market in in our own way you know and and to some degree mixed in with our other you know more more unique propositions around you know uh, uh, that we built as an agency and that that can make you know that that can that can kind of i guess weaken both sides of that right and make it less clear what the actual value of wordpress as a platform is at enterprise versus what 10 ups version of that is or what the ip's version of that is or 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 decodes version of that is um and yeah i guess also you know makes it harder to differentiate because like ultimately we're all just delivering wordpress and so well what's the difference um i mean i think we've we've definitely seen both sides of it right like, sometimes mm. we are just delivering and that includes selling in wordpress as well I, i've also responded to the rfps where it's very clearly an rfp for a cms selection mm. one that part of the are quote unquote one that part of the rfp which is them selecting a product that i can't sell them um yeah <laughs> And then actually lost the business from the agency perspective. And I think that's actually a really good thing, right? Because they've gone through and considered WordPress against all the other content management systems from a pure 
kind of capabilities standpoint. And there's something kind of nice about that, not necessarily mm-hmm. losing out on the work, but you know, sure. that process. Yeah, work process is still one. It then in that, yeah. is that, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I, I think there's several discussions to be had here because yeah. uh, uh, like one is uh, we're delivering enterprise standard tech uh, but mm-hmm. as you said we're doing it our way you're doing it your way and then we're just like everyone else we're doing it our way and it has no with basically wordpress anymore you have wordpress at its core so it would be it would be like if you google wordpress there's not a single article out there on how do you build an enterprise uh wordpress site it's all that kind of doi uh, get some plugins uh, and so on. Yeah. So, uh, what if we started agreeing on kind of some some sort of uh, standard, so uh, so that we leverage what has brought us here as a community uh, and start playing off each other uh, uh, differently. So that's one interesting conversation. And then yeah. it's uh, like uh, if I go to WordCamp now. It's never to learn about WordPress. It's to meet you guys. Uh, but we could do more sharing of knowledge on how do you run a business? How do we create a value on top of the platforms we're building so that that becomes a part of the discourse, uh, not just teaching each other how to build plugins and, and kind of uh, further the technology. Uh, uh, that, that would be interesting, sharing of, sharing of knowledge. Um, and then uh, back to the point. So we get we get two kinds of kind of clients in the door. Uh, one is where it's a big tender or a, a big project. We're competing against against other CMSs. Then we have to compete as an agency that can deliver full service. The other way is, uh, and often smaller projects is uh, some design agency, some advertising agency own a client, they do the design and they ask us to do the implementation. When that happens, we're kind of off the field of giving advice that can affect the business. We can give advice on how to build the best website, uh, but they take ownership and kind of the business strategy and business development Mm. for that client. And uh, that's boring. Uh, And we're not really creating value for the client. And then WordPress us delivering WordPress aren't seen as the one that can uh, can deliver that value uh, that goes beyond just the technical platform. And I think we need to get on that playing field in order to push WordPress further in the enterprise space. Yeah, I guess it, it's, uh, I, you, you, you talked about in, in the article that, you know, the agencies that are using WordPress, but really aren't part of, you know, really aren't part of the community and, 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 and really WordPress is not even part of their proposition. It's just like something they happen to be using yeah. to build um, in the background. And so, you know, you can imagine that they are doing a much better job then of, of um, talking to the customer like much earlier and, and further up the food chain when it comes to kind of strategy. Um, but that, you know, the, the, the problem we have as a WordPress space is none of that really accrues back to WordPress, that, that, that all accrues to them and their positioning. Um, and, and then you've got us kind of as WordPress agencies, you know, and I, and I think, you know, uh, us in this room and, 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 and others, there are, you know, there are good examples as of, of, of WordPress focused agencies that are reaching up to that kind of more strategic layer. Um, but I think it's definitely true to say as a space, we're still uh, predominantly uh, tech. And uh, and oh, I see Gabe's got disconnected. I'm just going to uh, just going to reinvite him in. Uh, and uh, there we go. Add a speaker. There we go. Um, uh, so yeah, I guess that, that that's kind of an interesting. There's there, there's an interesting difference there, I suppose, of like the agencies that are have most relegated WordPress to just being a tool. Um, a pra- and are perhaps most successful at this at this kind of uh, business outcome strategic layer um, have have left WordPress behind it to some degree and are not really then um, br- yeah bringing WordPress along and I suppose so I suppose the opportunity for us as as WordPress agencies and who care about furthering kind of WordPress as the enterprise platform it's like figuring out how we how we do that but but without 
uh, without leaving WordPress completely behind. And uh, and I guess that's what one of the one of the fears I have of the space at the moment is that you know what whilst it is uh, just a, a bunch of you know so fragmented between individual players who are taking WordPress to market that there you know we have some really big players WordPress VIP, a Pantheon, a Dopey Engine who are who, who are you know that it's them that show up on Gartner, not WordPress itself. Yeah. It's them that show up in the reporting, uh, and so we, you know, you can imagine a world where where WordPress becomes ever less and less kind of known and relevant, and that then overall we kind of all lose out uh, to some degree, even whilst individually some of the players in the space, you know, really succeed. Um, I think I think that's a a really important point, right? Like uh, talking back to the RFPs where people are looking to select a CMS, most of the time mm. that RFP is going not to us, it's going to automatic, right? Or it's going to mm-hmm. WordPress VIP, it's mm-hmm. going to WP Engine and they're buying, mm. and you hear customers talk about this, right? Like we're buying WordPress VIP, not WordPress. Right. And yeah, they don't realize that they're actually buying hosting and customizations on top of WordPress. They're not buying WordPress right. at all because it is an open source yeah. product. And so I, I almost wonder whether we have to start like, okay, what if we took an RFP that's for CMS selection, broke that mm. down and turned that almost into a website about enterprise WordPress, right? right? That was like, right. here is the value of enterprise WordPress. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I love, I love, you know, th- that idea. And, it, you know, it's definitely not to, like, I think it's really, it's been hugely um, important for WordPress uh, as, in the kind of in the enterprise space that that uh, some of us, you know, and I think I'd include the three of us on this call and, and also some of the bigger platforms, you know, have been so successful at like taking WordPress uh, and, and building a proposition around it that, that um, and, and kind of scaling into enterprise. Um, but it's like... Uh, um, you know, maybe as as we like look to 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 feed that success back into WordPress overall and like r- rise the tide for all boats or whatever, it it seems like there's a big opportunity there, and that yeah, there's a risk that 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 goes too far and you end up, you know, perhaps I look at Drupal as a little bit of an example of this, where you end up with like one or two players who really um, become synonymous with yeah. with the platform, and that that overall actually is quite detrimental to the to the space more broadly. Yeah, I don't think anybody yeah, who well, buys Drupal differentiates between buying Aquia right. and or Aquia and yeah. and Drupal. And, and and this is where kind of the the open source mindset comes in, and why it's mm. really good that we're having this discussion because uh, we still have the possibility to say what what does this version of kind of the the enterprise output, the enterprise communication around WordPress look like if it's not by one player, but we're doing it kind of the, the open source way uh, mm. and, and collaborating on it. Uh, I think that would be something different uh, yeah. and could be really fun to see. Um, I wonder like why, you know, why do you think that, that we haven't really seen that happen so much? You know, I think on the one hand, we're all pretty good at, collaborating at the technology level you know most of the major players who are you know individually taking wordpress to market to to this enterprise market are collaborating on the back end around the technology you know whether that's directly on core or 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 the kind of broader ecosystem of like plugins and libraries and best practice and whatnot um you know it's it's it's, it seems like well we clearly have that capability and and have uh you know value d- d- clearly derived a lot of value from that as as a as a collective um but that hasn't you know we haven't really translated that to this kind yeah. of go to market like platform positioning kind of piece uh, i wonder i wonder why you think that is. Um, and it, the, the wordpress kind of ecosystem is uh i love it but it's very introvert mm. we're we're discussing tech and code and best way of doing things Mm. We're, there's not a lot of discussion going on, on on the value we're bringing the people we're building these sites for. Uh, it's it's not an enterprise example, but just comparing WooCommerce and Shopify mm. in terms of how they do their marketing. If you everything around Woo, WooCommerce is what pl- plugin do you download to achieve this, whereas Shopify they talk about how do you sell more of your products. You 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 have a web shop that's done with. Now let's help you become a, a successful web shop. Uh, you need to think yeah, about right. your stock. You need to think about your 
logistics and uh, things that don't really have anything to do with the, the web platform. But it, 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 you need to learn these things in order to, to be a successful little, little web shop. Uh, yeah. I, I think there's something else at play as well. Like I'm newer to the WordPress space than either of you. I would say cool. when I kind of entered the WordPress space probably five, six years ago with kind of joining 10 up, from my perspective, the community was actually, especially the enterprise community, was much more tight knit at that point. And I, I don't know if it's COVID mm. or, or whatever else it is, but it feels like it has kind of drifted further away and become more fragmented. And maybe that's just a natural thing that happens as we all individually get bigger as agencies and are kind of chasing the next big deal. And that's what we're focused on. But I, there feels like a, a real change there that's happened. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. Actually, I do. I do feel like that. You know, I think back to the kind of early days of the enterprise WordPress space. You know, I think around that time, the VIP, you know, VIP was just kind of coming into view. The, the you know, this this concept of like the the kind of uh, I guess the VIP partner program, which was kind of the first enterprise. Uh, collaboration kind of in the space that 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 felt quite collaborative and like that at that point you probably wouldn't have drawn much of a distinction between the group that were um taking wordpress to to that enterprise market and and positioning it and doing all of that and like the you know the broader enterprise wordpress ecosystem that those were somewhat one and the same um and so perhaps yeah anything that we were doing there really was to a large degree accruing back to enterprise WordPress in the more generic sense. And that like almost as, as more players have, have come in perhaps. And I think COVID has played a role. Like everyone's probably just been a bit heads down and focused on their own company's kind of survival, understandably. Um, you know, I, I, I feel like this article and the kind of conversations, you know, certainly the thinking I've been doing, it does feel like, we're we're perhaps at a place now or are coming into this place where I'm I'm seeing a lot of people are like looking up again for the first time in a couple of years and and mm. rethinking about a lot of these bigger questions um which has been really really um heartening to see uh, and uh, yeah it's like can, can we now turn that into some action I suppose and I think there's even more of an opportunity with kind of the the broader macroeconomic stuff going on right now that like yeah. now is a very good time for us to do that and yeah. people are looking for that and people are looking for what is the next platform that actually helps them not just mm -hmm. save money but succeed in in kind of more challenging times where like growth is not just a kind of guaranteed outcome anymore yeah 100 percent. yeah I mean, yeah i mean that, i wonder if there's something to be said for just you know that, that i guess a, yeah a bunch of us companies hit a certain level of of of, of scale uh where you know I guess, I guess everyone has just been kind of focused on like grow growing as a company and getting through those early few milestones that you you go through you know as you like scale up and um that that's just hard and take takes a lot of focus and like you know uh now, now that there is a kind of uh, a good number of of um of larger kind of successful enterprise wordpress focused companies we've now like got the maturity and the the um the headspace to like think about this uh, in addition to to to, to ourselves um but but to your point there uh, tom so uh dico we're we're not that big and we're mm -hmm. kind of a, a couple of years behind you guys but we're growing steadily uh, yeah so the the conversations and knowledge sharing i have with you guys on not that it's really nothing to do with wordpress but how do you mm. build a company is yeah. just as valuable uh, to have that network. And if you mm -hmm. think of how many smaller companies there are in the WordPress ecosystem that needs that sort of mentoring, that should be part of a, a kind of WordCamp or a conversation as well. Yeah, uh, That's also valuable knowledge. Like all of us, all of us will be better off that the companies growing up in our community yeah. are more professionalized because we know that then uh, they will they will deliver better services and a better experience to to clients and that the 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 left impression of WordPress will just be better uh, better off in total. But I I also wonder whether we've kind of outgrown WordCamp as it kind of exists mm -hmm. right now and that that's part of the challenge, right? Like take yep. AWS for example that runs. 50, 60 different conferences a year with different focuses mm. in different kind of areas. 
is that actually where we're at as an industry right now that we need to really be thinking about, okay, what is the enterprise WordPress conference, whether it's connected yep. to, to WordCamp or not, and not to say WordCamp should change, right? Like, I think there's so much value in that, yep. but like, yep. we, yeah. we need more than that, I think. Yeah, I, I, I definitely uh, agree with that 100%. I mean, so, something that really just struck me as we were going around intros, actually, which like, really connects back to this like knowledge sharing piece and the kind of you know i guess the benefits to um to to spreading our learnings uh through the ecosystem and like helping other agencies it's like actually all of us founded were founded about 12 years ago um mm. and like one of the things that really struck me actually you know we, we, we were we were pretty into for a couple of years building Altis. Like it kind of took everything we had to, to, to build a product. Um, and so, you know, we, we were not that focused on the agency space for a while. Um, and then COVID, of course, you know, I think also um, uh, impacted that a lot. But then, you know, I, as I kind of started looking up again and like digging into WordPress agency space, it kind of surprised me that like not actually that much has happened. Um, and that it still feels like ultimately is the same people the same players the same agencies there's been a little bit of change but but I, I wonder whether that is yeah i wonder whether there's anything there like why why aren't there loads of enterprise agencies that have started in the interim and that are like you know uh giving all all us oldies a, a real run for our money and, or, or is that happening or I, i'm just not seeing it i think it's happening um I, I think part of it is the way they're talking about themselves right like mm. we as agencies all started as WordPress agencies, a lot of those agencies yeah. that are, are kind of newer now did not and started as... They just don't identify like, yeah. you know, like we would identify. Exactly. Yeah. And, 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 super interesting. and I think some of the enterprises also happening in, in the really big guys, right? Like the companies owned mm. by WPP or Publicis or whoever it is. And again, they're not talking about themselves as, as WordPress agencies. They're just agencies solving problems. Yep. So also, actually, a local problem is becoming that uh, WordPress uh, is the kind of wording around it. WordPress isn't cool. So mm. there's, like, developers. It's almost impossible to find developers locally. Uh, they're not really wanting to work with WordPress. Uh, the other agencies and consultancies are uh, mostly recommending other platforms. And that... Uh, and we've seen these all 12 years. It's just trends com comes and goes and comes and goes. And WordPress has been kind of growing steadily. That's also a, a paradox to me is seeing seeing WordPress market share keeping uh, or growing in Scandinavia and the numbers mm. are becoming like catching up with the rest of the world. But the, uh, the, the popularity in terms of wanting to work on the platform is just uh, dropping and it's becoming yeah. a, a real issue. It, and especially like when you start talking about headless or other kind of JavaScript mm -hmm. type projects that need to really be integrated with WordPress, trying to find people who want to work on both React yep. or other JavaScript frameworks and WordPress is is really challenging. Uh, and, and it's it's really different from a cultural standpoint, what those developers are looking for versus kind of traditional WordPress engineers. It, it, it's a, I think you're right about the talent pool being in a, a bit of a funny place right mm. now. Hmm. Yeah, I think the head head this actually is an interesting example of some of this for me, where it's like as an in as a kind of industry or an ecosystem, I think we did a pretty good job of like building that technical capability, right? As a, as a, and and you know making sure that WordPress had a REST API and had the kind of libraries around it, and you know I think you know a lot of us continue to use that today, um, but we didn't really manage collectively to like lift WordPress's positioning uh, yeah. as like the go-to headless option, you know, that to some degree other competitors, I think of like a Contentful or others, you know, done a better job of uh, at that kind of positioning go to market piece. Um, and like, although WordPress, you know, like yet again, WordPress actually does technically have the capability, but ends up not really being known for it, which is like, yeah. you know, a, sh a real shame. <laughs> and, and, you know, uh, feel, feels like uh, if I imagine, you know what, what 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 would it mean to do that again it's like well build, building building the rest api and all starting to use it is like half the job and the other half yeah. is okay how do we now uh, 
build that capability into the WordPress kind of enterprise proposition and take that to market and, and all of the all of the activity that, that, that goes around that. I wonder if you're seeing think, other examples of that. I mean, I think I think that highlights one of the biggest areas of fragmentation, right? Like if you look at like headless WordPress, you've got mm. Runity, which is no more. You've got whatever kind yep. of automatics take is. You've got WP Engine's take. Mm. You've got our take in what we're doing. <laughs> I'm sure there yeah. are other frameworks out there. Like, why have we not just figured out how to create an open source project here yeah. that we all contribute to and mm. that is the way that you interact with WordPress from a headless standpoint? Like, why does that not exist? And, and why are we all doing it ourselves and taking different opinions on it? Maybe yeah. that's a maturity of, of kind of JavaScript engineering and, and Node and mm -hmm. React, but I... I think it's also us not coming together and saying, how do we want to do this? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I wonder if, uh, you know, there, there's something similar uh, or a similar opportunity and risk around Gutenberg and this kind of whole kind of low code empowering marketers to, 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 to like build out much more stuff themselves. Again, yeah. we've got a lot of the technical capability now, like in the platform, um, you know, it, it demos great. It it it, it uh, compares really well to a lot of the what the you know other major platforms are doing. I mean, I think it's a lot better in a lot of cases. Um, but again, that's like kind of only half the half the problem. If if you don't really know about that as a as a someone who's can, who's looking for your next digital platform until you've like chosen WordPress, found the host, found the agency, and start building, that that's like way too late, and we're missing out on you know a lot of people. I guess in that case. Yeah, I like, don't know about that ahead of time. Yeah, there are literally no marketing and positioning uh, around WordPress Enterprise, except mm -hmm. for what you find on your individual websites. Look at what yeah. we've done. Look at what you've done. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, you, you're you're doing a pretty good search uh, to get to one of our sites. You know right. what you want there, uh, but yeah, to to be top of mind when you're actually trying to figure out what platform to solve my business needs on. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think we're kind of invisible to that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the, the first stop when people are thinking about that is WordPress VIP, right? Like yeah. they have, they are the only ones who have kind of cut through that yeah. noise, at least as far as SEO and, and kind of content is concerned. And that's not necessarily the right starting point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I'm I thinking back to the growth councils that Matt uh, kind of experimented with a couple of years ago now, you know, which I think, I think to some degree, there was a consumer growth council and enterprise growth council. I think to some degree, both were focused on like this problem, like how do we better collaborate at, at the kind of marketing positioning level um, as an ecosystem, because collectively we're 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 putting in as much effort and and dollars even uh, as like some of the major competitors, but but we're we're doing it in such a fragmented way that we make like you know every company invests their hundred grand in marketing and uh, and only you know we each collectively get five percent of the way and uh, our competitor is is invested that once and and yeah. got like a hundred percent. Um, you know, and I guess what one of the outcomes of that work was 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 how can we do? I think pretty much what we've been talking about here, right? Like, what would it mean for WordPress.org as a to become a bit of a destination for enterprise? And uh, you know, there is there is like an enterprise page on WordPress.org now. It's um, it's not much, um, but maybe maybe it's the start of something. I wonder, you know, is that is that the like right place for that, or is is uh, is there benefits to having kind of an enterprise WordPress brand destination that that's separate from .org? I tend to think it's got to be separate, right? Like, mm. especially if your buyers are from the marketing side of the house, right? Like, I think a, a technical mm. buyer will dig in, they'll understand things, they'll take the time. A marketing buyer is just looking for a very quick understanding. What's the value proposition? Why is this better for my team? How am I going to mm. help my team? succeed as as kind of a marketing department and so i think that needs to be slick it needs to feel enterprise it needs to be a site that can compete with you know adobe experience manager a site that can compete with site core right it, it's got to be yeah. more of, of that 
Well, and, and, and again, we have the ingredients here. What We just need to sit down and kind of figure it out. What does the open source version of that look like? How do we yeah. kind of chip in together and make that happen? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, have either of you kind of seen examples of, of that happening, even in, in small ways, I wonder, that, and uh, you know, whether that's within the kind of worker space or even like, you know, uh, in other spaces? I think the best example, although it starts to kind of bump up against how, you know, Automatic and, and WordPress VIP are doing it is, is probably Next.js, right? Like, mm. that is an open source project that is yeah. very, very much enterprise feeling. Um, I, I think yeah. the difference there is the kind of controlling company behind it is not trying to serve the entire market. They're just trying to serve enterprise. So the work they do kind of inherently serves that, but I, I think it could be a bit of a, a starting point for a model, mm. right? Like there's something interesting there. Something, something I've been, I mean, I think that's a, that's a, that is a really great example that, that, and that, you know, it speaks to just like as a space, there's stuff we can learn from, from other, from other spaces goes back to that kind of like, uh, we can suffer from being too insular. Um, you know, I see like Jamstack and like the Mac Alliance as being interesting examples of like, you know, somewhat solving a similar set of issues for, for, for all of those folks where, where, you know, you've got a bunch of like individual kind of solutions, technical mm -hmm. solutions, um, and I imagine they were all running into that problem. You know, how do they present a clear uh, proposition to market to better to better compete against the the all in one suites? Um, uh, and uh, yeah, do, doing that in a fragmented way that we're doing it within the WordPress space, you know, has all the downsides we've talked about. Um, so it seems, seems also like there's some interesting models there um, that that could be worth looking at. Um, um, I guess we have seen some examples of this, like I'm thinking even outside of enterprise, there's like Newspack, I guess, is a bit of an example. Mm -hmm. There's been a few kind of publishing industry ones. I feel like almost everyone everyone in the space has had one a go at a, a run at this. It doesn't ever feel like it's really stuck. Um, I don't know whether there's something to learn from like why, why that hasn't really worked. But, but there's also a per perception problem. So again, to, to our local market, so our competitors, uh, it's big consultancies with with a thousand people. Mm. And mm -hmm. when they recommend a platform to their clients, uh, uh, like you don't really need marketing, that recommendation just locks it in. Right now, right, uh, right now in, in, in Norway, it's sanity all over. And mm -hmm. the sanity doesn't really do a good job themselves. But these big consultancy do all the marketing for them and they are super close well, to their clients sure uh, yeah i mean that that speaks to the i guess you know we're talking about the kind of a website or something that, that that does the positioning but partnerships is a huge opportunity too right like individually yeah. we're all you know trying to to, to build partnerships externally Mm. Um, you know, especially if we're smaller, it can be difficult to even get a partnership with someone like a uh, a publicist or something, right? These big consultancies. But uh, you know, could we come together and and um, partner as as an enterprise WordPress space? You know, that that yeah. seems much more doable um, and much more interesting. For, you know, from 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 one of these uh, much larger players' point of view as well, because you know they're yeah. not just partnering with a with a couple of hundred person agency or whatever they're, they're partnering with, with a much wider ecosystem. I, I, I kind of think, you know, a lot of the technology integrations the same, like, again, it, if you have a, have a tech stack, a MarTech stack, you know, how do you, how, where do you go to see whether enterprise WordPress integrates really seamlessly with that stack? Like it's yeah. a mess at the moment. And yeah. Yeah. Um, if we were a single vendor, of course, we would be going and doing deals with all of the top players and putting those on our website as like the enterprise integrations that are out of the box or easy to, uh, you know, to, to, to put in place or whatever. Um, exactly. Yeah. And I think that that's like so critical. That is, in my mind, one of the big enterprise selling points of WordPress yeah. is yeah. you can use the marketing automation tools that are right for your business. Right. You don't have to use a single stack for everything, but we don't talk about that anywhere in a coherent no. way. There's no, to your point, there's no like directory of partners right. in the way that there needs to be to make that 
easy. And and quite frankly, those plugins are usually crap, right? Like yes. those yeah. plugins are the most important plugins for enterprise. Nobody mm. maintains them. Nobody builds new features into them. And and we all just kind of suffer through it because that's not <laughs> there. <laughs> That was that was my uh, my my time to get disconnected. Then I just dropped off for a second. Um, uh, I mean that that that, that actually maybe maybe it strikes me as as a as a better example of something where like it to some degree is going to be impossible for any singular player to solve that. You know, um, and we say you know that that's that's somewhere where even the biggest platform players in the space have not got that far. You know, um, because it, it it you know the, the the long tail of integrations that are, that are necessary to like serve the majority of, of an enterprises like MarTech or, 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 or whatever stack, like, you know, that, that's, that, that feels like a, one of the areas where yeah. WordPress really can strongly outcompete like any of the single vendor players, because there's just so many mm. of these integrations ultimately. And um, mm. we can collectively uh, build them all in a way that, even an Adobe or someone is going to struggle to do, no matter how many thousands of developers they hire. Like, um, but again, without yeah, like that singular I would, story, it ends up being super yeah. frequent. And, and I would say probably seventy percent, if not more, of our clients are using some set of Salesforce yeah. tools. There's no particularly good integration yeah. with Salesforce, yeah. and Salesforce uses WordPress, right? Like, Salesforce has invested yeah. massively in WordPress, and yet. <laughs> that doesn't exist and 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 why is that right and that would be a massive differentiator yeah. in, in the space yeah 100 percent um magna i don't know whether you wanted to come in uh you know quickly on the end of that if not we've kind of got 10 minutes or so left before at the top of the hour so i was just going to uh ask our audience who are listening along if if anyone's got any questions or kind of uh thoughts or topics that, that they'd like to uh to bring in for this like final 10 minutes um, I think perhaps you can just request to speak or like do some kind of emoji hand up or something. Um, so do that and uh, and uh, in the next couple of minutes and then uh, uh, I'll bring you in as a speaker um, if uh, if you do. We've got a question actually just on Twitter. So maybe I'll, I'll ask that. We could talk about that. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, I've impression that with the new FSC, that's kind of the front uh, full site editing themes, uh, many creators are more and more presenting themselves as theme developers while they're basically just creating patterns and theme design without programming extra functionality. Is this blurring the line? Um, so I guess the question there around kind of full site editing and I guess the future of themes, you know, does theming kind of go away? Um, I mean, maybe may a question that's, you know, a little, a little less relevant at the enterprise level just because theming is so much uh, is already like a less distinct thing, I suppose, at the enterprise level. I don't know whether either of you have kind of uh, been digging into full set editing much or and have like uh, have thoughts on that. It's something we've been trying to figure out. What what does it actually mean yeah. for enterprise outside of the the theming space? But I think there's some interesting and kind of potentially compelling use cases there. I'm not quite sure what they are, right? Mm. Like, yeah, it's a funny one for me where like I'm really trying to figure out like what what does that set of features and functionality mean at the enterprise level? I don't know if you guys feel the same. Uh, I, I think, again, what we're seeing in, in kind of the enterprise space, uh, and I usually say this, building a website that looks good is it's not hard. It's not a big part of the job anymore. Mm. It's everything else that goes around uh, to, to make integrations work, workflows, marketing automation. Like, uh, so uh, I think uh, we're, we're also missing a way to distinguish kind of the, the hierarchy or the, the taxonomy of different websites. So, uh, and this is also something I, I, I think I mentioned in my article, and I usually have this as a slide, uh, when you see the Squarespace logo, you know it's cheap. When you see the Optimizely or uh, Adobe logo, you know it's expensive. When you see the WordPress logo, you don't really know what you're talking about. Everyone can have their uh, their own kind of back, background story and, and uh, know how WordPress. Uh, so it's really hard to, to really, are we talking about a big website? Are we talking about a complex website? Is it a simple website and, and so on? So that's also blurry to, to me. And I think we would do good to uh, elaborate or uh, kind of 
work a little bit more on the on the taxonomy of what we're building. Mm, yeah, what, what is enterprise WordPress? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's uh, that, that feels like one of the one of the real core points here. Um, we got Mohammed requesting to come in and just add, ask us a question, so I'm I'm going to uh, going to figure out how to add you now. Um, having that you do exactly that. He's connecting. Okay, it looks like you joined Nudis. So if you want to unmute Mohammed, tell us who you are and and uh, and ask away. Hello, guys. Thank you. Thank you for allowing uh, allowing me to talk. Uh, so my name is Saqib, and uh, I am from Lahore, Pakistan. But uh, I just want to share uh, my recent experience of working with an agency that is dealing with enterprise clients, and uh, a major reason why they are not going for WordPress is usually that uh, they are not happy with the multilingual support provided currently in the WordPress. Usually most of the sites that they build are multilingual sites. And uh, for example, uh, let me be open, uh, like they mostly go for Drupal because it has a much better multilingual mm -hmm. support. So that is one thing. And uh, then there are uh, points, for example, uh, if you go in WordPress and you use a plugin, for example, you go for contact form seven or something like that, uh, and you are not hosting on your standard, uh, for example, on a standard hosting structure where uh, the file structure is common, but uh, but if you are going for something like Pantheon or anything where you have a custom, custom uh, file structure, some plugin starts to fail on the edge cases and usually when you when you have to provide a, a more professional solution you end up paying for the custom work or you end up basically uh, going for at least the pro version of those plugins so basically i think uh, the overall ecosystem with respect to plugins and how how quickly you need to go for <clears throat> i mean you are building a site and you might need to buy like 10 pro versions uh, for different plugins to make it work the way you want to work it but for example, the same thing if you do, for example, in Drupal and you have web forms module and you, if, if, if you explore that, that provides you value, a lot more value uh, just out of the box that is purely open source and you do not have to pay for anything. So I, I guess like um, these are the two things that I want to share. That first is uh, we need a better multilingual support. Uh, in WordPress, and the second is that with respect to modules, uh, with respect to like plugins, I think as a community we need to come together to basically um, build certain modules that are required by by almost every site. For example, at, at least a forms plugin should be something like uh, maybe uh, there should be a plugin uh, that should be like very good, uh, like very much good enough without the pro version, and the community should stand behind mm -hmm. it and provide you know. Uh, like all the advanced feature that a general enterprise website might need. So things like that, I think, are missing still. And uh, yeah, uh, I totally agree. Thanks for uh, thanks for raising that up, Steve. Um, I mean, uh, that that I mean, multilingual is a great example because that's a that's a really key capability, and it is particularly fragmented in terms of how you know we we all we all have our own approach. There's not really any one plugin that's broken through and and become the standard. Um, and so it's like everyone. Every, I'm sure all of us can great, build great multilingual sites, but but it, but it, WordPress yeah. as, it's, uh, as it stands isn't doesn't end up being known for that. Um, and I think there's there's good and bad about that, right? Like we we yep. actually just did an internal piece of work to kind of audit the the multilingual kind of localization marketplace as it relates to WordPress because there are a lot of different solutions they're all built around different use cases, right? And, and and I think that's the thing that we kind of forget is we say multilingual. Do we actually mean multilingual? Do we mean localization? Do we mean a, a single site that has the same content everywhere? And, and we think that there's a single solution for that. There isn't. But again, to the kind of conversation we were having before, there's no good place to go and find, okay, here are the five different multilingual plugins. Here yeah. is why you should use this one or that one or the other one. Yeah, for me, actually, this has this kind of an interesting, interesting just thinking about plugins. I, you know, I suppose at the enterprise level, like it, it, it definitely has struck me that like very few 
plugins have really broken through in, in yeah. into the into the enterprise level. Like even you know, as as enterprise agencies, there are very few plugins. I'm sure that we're all consistently using across our yeah. enterprise sites. Um, you know, the platforms. You know, again, there's very few plugins that they're like relying on. Um, which I, which I think is you know is interesting and and you know a, a potential source of like uh, capability as a platform. I suppose you know you would. Uh, kind of low low lower down lower lower down market than enterprise plugins are a huge asset for wordpress and that yeah. that ends up not really being the case at the enterprise level like yoast is perhaps one of the few that i see just consistently you saw on every word, uh, enterprise wordpress site not many others have, have, have really made it you know to that level um, yeah. yeah um and i wonder but, but that, that, yeah that what, makes know, sense what, why that is that, that makes sense because uh, uh, uh this is what got us here and that's yeah. the uh, the business model of something cheap for as many people as possible. And yeah. we're sort of stuck in that business model. There aren't a business model to mm. sustain a plugin meant for the enterprise. It's a different yeah. ball game. Yeah. And probably most of what could have been plugins for the enterprise is something you built or we built or, mm -hmm. or someone else working in And we're sitting on this. Uh, yeah. uh, and, and also we've kind of shoehorned WordPress into doing the job for us our way then all of a sudden it isn't the plugin that kind of works across any installation anymore because we all do things slightly differently. So you would still have to kind of adapt it and to get it up and up and running. Yeah. Yeah. I, great point. I do think the point about forms though, right? Like that's a very good point of like mm. something that we all have to have on. I can't think of a website where I haven't had to have forms on it. Yeah. Why isn't that core capability? Like, why are there not? Yeah. Like, what are the the handful of features that should just be things you can do within WordPress that we are all using plugins mm -hmm. or building custom solutions for? Um, oh, well, perfect, perfect person to perhaps speak to that. Uh, Leslie has just uh, just requested to jump in from Newsletter Glue, so I'm just going to add you as a speaker now, Leslie. And uh, and you can jump in and, and close us out. We're we're up to four minutes to the head of the hour, so we'll probably wrap after this. Uh, it joins you muted, Leslie. Just so you'll need to unmute before uh, before you can jump in. All right. Hi everyone. Thanks thanks for the super interesting discussion. I kind of randomly chanced upon it and ended up listening for the entire thing. Uh, so thanks. Nice. Um, yeah. Um, speaking of enterprise plugins, I'd be super curious to know kind of what um, enterprise agencies look for in an enterprise plugin because there aren't that many out there. And also like how, you know, how, how does it work when you sell enterprise plugins to your clients? Is it you manage the entire thing on your own or is it, you know, you have to sell it to the client and then the client like, buys individual licenses for 50 different plugins? Yeah, great question. Uh, Gabe Magnum, one of you wants to come in and just kind of answer from 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 your agency's perspective. Yeah, I mean, we we typically set the expectation that there will be some either third party services or plugins that will be required. Um, and you know, when we're we're talking about enterprise budgets, right? That's usually a small percentage of the overall cost of the build. We really try to keep that limited, right? I, I think on any given site, I, I've never seen us have more than kind of three to five plugins that we we truly need to to do what we're trying to do um which again i think speaks to the point that there are not enough enterprise plugins out there yeah well, for, for uh, me uh, oh sorry go on Magna, you jump in first uh well um what we're looking for in an enterprise plugin is a plugin uh where a client can break things and and again that's where when you're building a plugin today you're building a plug plugin that allows for millions of people to do what they need to do. So there's just too much flexibility going on and, and too many options, which makes sense in the kind of DIY, DIY space. Uh, most of the work we do when we we're bringing plugins in is, is how do we, how do we constrain it and, and, uh, and remove options. We just wanted to do what, what we're, what we set out to do. I think Yoast's like a really interesting example here. For, like for me, I probably, I think the, the, I'd speak to kind of the, almost the, the, the positioning kind of proposition of what WordPress Enterprise is um, piece. Like to, to some degree, there's not really 
there, there aren't really incentives as an agency to use a lot of these third third party plugins, right? Like the, the, it is often, you know, I think I think given we are putting out a our own preposition, what is the human made way or the attend up way? Like, you know, over time, you, you, it, there's a lot of incentives to just develop your own solutions or, or at least, you know, what you want out of a plugin actually is something that's like a library or something that you can build your own solutions on top of, uh, which is, I think is why, you know, a lot of the enterprise plugins actually are, are perhaps more like that. Elastic Press is a good example from 10up that we've all got like lots of examples of that. Like what sets Yoast apart, I think, is is that like it's broken through and like, you know, yeah. clients request it. They see it as part of the preposition mm. of enterprise WordPress. And so it's baked in and like whether it's better for us as an agency to like use that to deliver against the client's SEO needs or like build something custom, then, you know, then doesn't really matter. And it, and it feels like that more so than like the technical answer of like, you know, what do plugins need to do technically? I feel like that's perhaps the the bigger question is like if there becomes a definition of what enterprise WordPress is, that will definitely need uh, plugins to break through, uh, you know, yeah. capabilities to break through so that they become part of that. And then, you know, that, yeah, that, that then, then, then consistently as a space we're then delivering using them you know that there are very few plugins that the clients know about at the enterprise level um and and would request you know yoast is one of well, one and, of the few and we we de-enterprise it by talking about it as plugins right because most yeah. of the time what we're talking about are integrations or additional functionality that the site needs right yoast is additional functionality uh, you know, Elastic Press is an integration with Elasticsearch, yes. right? Why yes. why are we talking about it as a plugin at the enterprise mm. level? Agreed. Nobody nobody cares. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, WooCommerce, perhaps in a, you know another example of of like something that's breaking through into that into that layer. So yeah, I think I think it's about like how do we you know if I take if I take new, newsletter glue. It's like how how does how does newsletters become a uh, a part of that core preposition? Um, and and how it, you know how how does newsletter glue become become the 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 solution to that I suppose and then you know agencies will 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 use it when they're delivering enterprise WordPress kind of by definition almost um, and it feels like as a space we would benefit from having way more like ready to go answers <laughs> you know multilingual uh, uh, the, the the previous question feels like another another example of that no no one's really broken through and so therefore as a space we're not really benefiting from from the like. Yeah. Uh, the, the, having that as a core part of our preposition. Um, all righty, we're, we're, we're at the top of the hour, a couple of minutes over. Uh, so I think we should, we'll, should wrap here. I'm sure everyone's got meetings to go to. Um, Magna, Gabe, I, I really, really appreciate you, uh, you jumping on and, uh, uh, and carrying this conversation on. I think that um, it's a conversation I know is happening, you know, uh, in a lot of, a lot of spaces at the moment. It, your article was, 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 a, was kind of one of the examples of it breaking cover. I think it's a conversation we all need to keep happening. And like, uh, I certainly plan to, to keep doing much more of this and like see if we can, see if we can gather consensus and momentum around, around some action, you know, over the coming months. Looking forward to it. Thanks. Thanks for setting this up, Tom. And thanks, everyone, for, for joining. Awesome. Okay, now I've got to figure out how to, uh, how to what, what we do to, like, wrap this up and get the recording. <laughs> thanks, guys. Um, cheers, guys. Yeah, feel free cheers. to just drop if, if you've got other stuff to go to. Why I, I, I'll finish, figure out. Okay, end space and stop recording. <laughs> mm -mm -mm.